The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus went to a town called Naim, accompanied by his disciples and a great number of people. When he was near the gate of the town, it happened that a dead man was being carried out for burial, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a considerable number of the townspeople were with him. When the Lord saw her, he felt sorry for her. Do not cry, he said. Then he went up and put his hand on the bier, and the bearer stood still, and he said, Young man, I tell you to get up. And the dead man sat up and began to talk, and Jesus gave him to his mother. Everyone was filled with awe and praised God, saying, A great prophet has appeared among us. God has visited his people. And this opinion of him spread throughout Judea and all over the countryside. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, fine. Good morning, all, everybody. Hi. Feeling top form today. Um, you would remember, nod your heads if you remember, and if you don't, I'll rouse on you. But this year, this year uh, Easter was in March. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, which is very early and most unusual. And that's why you've probably never heard this gospel before on a Sunday. I can't remember ever preaching on it. And in the three-year cycle, the 10th Sunday, you know, like the last couple of month, weeks, we've had Christ the King and Pentecost and all the big feasts come in. And, and I can't remember ever preaching on this gospel before. Uh, I remember Nain, the town. Uh, one day I got stuck on Mount Tabor. I got a taxi up there at 10 o'clock in the morning and there was no way of getting back. I was with a priest friend. Uh, we couldn't get a meal, we couldn't get a cup of tea, we couldn't get anything. Spent the whole day up there hungry. <laughs> and uh, we walked around a lot and it's quite, there's the mountain of the Transfiguration. Mm -hmm. And when you get to the edge and look down, the only, t you see the great big valley of Esdralon and one little town just at the bottom and that's Naim. And I remember Naim very well because of that, because I was hungry, all right? <laughs> so uh, today we got to read <laughs> about Jesus. It's a little town. It's not far from Bethlehem, where he was, you know, where Nazareth, where he was read, but be, you know, five miles from anywhere, there would be a long way. So I guess Jesus didn't often go through Naim. Uh, and in Luke's gospel, we, 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 we have the journey of Jesus from Galilee to Jerusalem. At the moment, he's still in Galilee. Two more weeks in Galilee, and then we go to Jerusalem. And that's our journey, my journey, your journey to the cross. Now... <laughs> I made a study of all the miracles of Jesus and uh, because we always want to learn how Jesus worked miracles because it might help us in uh, especially like praying for healing and things. And the more you study the, the way Jesus healed people, the more you realise that every time he did it, it was different. Yeah. Every single time. Sometimes he cast out demons, sometimes he'd laid on hands, sometimes they weren't even there, they were in another place. And the whole teaching seems to be forget about a method because it's what's it all about. The one thing that's common to all the miracles is Jesus' compassion. Compassion. He felt sorry for this woman. What's the point of going up to someone at a funeral and say, don't cry? We're told not to say that. It's stupid. Don't say I know how you feel because you don't know how they feel. But, but Jesus could say don't cry because he could do something about it. And he did. And he did. Now, that word compassion, uh, if it's the most outstanding characteristic of Jesus, and it is, like he walks into this strange town, he sees a crowd of people, he sees a funeral, and he goes up to the mother, the widow, and he has compassion for her and tells the dead son to come to life. Now, I was parish priest my last appointment, well, I was there 15 years of my life, um, at North Ryde. We had Northern Suburb Cemetery in the parish, the crematorium, and uh, uh, Macquarie Park now, and another crematorium there. I guess probably 40 funerals a day. Wow. And I was very conscious of the fact that maybe Five or six of them went with a prayer. I have got a great devotion for funerals. 
Every time a hearse goes past, I say a prayer for the person that died. But it never crossed my mind till now, preparing for this homily, that I never prayed for the mourners that were in the first car or the second car or the third car, you know? That Jesus' compassion is for the widow, for the mother of the boy. Because, you know, her husband's dead and her only son's dead. She's now on the, you know, got no means of support at all. She's, she's, she's almost an outcast of her, of her area because there's nobody left in her life that can support her. Now, I want to talk about this word compassion. If you're European background, I don't know what it is, Joe and Maltese, but, 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 but in the Italian, anybody with Italian background or French background or Latin background will, will get this. If you have a friend and you're Italian and you have a friend, the nicest way you could describe him would be as a tipo simpatico. As in sympathetic. We use the word sympathetic. I tell this story about it very quickly. A Polish priest staying with me just out from Poland and some of the parishioners has invited him for dinner Sunday after Mass and they had a big dinner, a big, big Polish dinner, you know, sausage. <laughs> and he, he came back and he went, to the, he went to the paper shop to buy a thank you card. He had very poor English and he picked out a sympathy card. <laughs> because in the language of the European, to be simpatico, to be simpatico means to be really of the same feeling as the people you were with. We've lost the meaning of it in English. And especially we've lost the meaning of it in English in the Beatitudes <coughs> where it says, blessed are they that mourn, they shall be comforted. What the name of goodness does that mean? Unless you understand that the word mourn is this simpatico word. Blessed are those that take on the burdens of another person who feels pain. Who are not just, who to be sympathetic in its original meaning means to feel the pain of another person. Jesus was stipo simpatico because on the cross he could say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Jesus took on all my pain. He took on all my sins. He took on all my sufferings. That's what the word means. Blessed are they that mourn. Blessed are those that can sympathise with other people, that can really feel what they feel, take on their pain, because if you do that, you will be consoled. I really, I'm a Beatitudes man. The Beatitudes are the teaching of Jesus on how to live a, a moral life. And basically, the, you know, we have great trouble, do we say blessed are or happy are? You know, all the translations you get different. And, and Jesus is saying, if you want to be happy, if you want to be happy, try this. You've tried the other things. And have you really got happiness? If you want to be happy, try it my way. And Jesus' way of being happy, one of the ways, is to feel the pain of other people, to walk the walk. To walk the journey. Don't just say, I know how you feel, but to really pick up the burdens and help them and do everything you can with this woman, this mother of this son, of this only son. Jesus didn't know them. He just walked in. He saw a funeral procession and he felt so much pain for that woman that he felt he had to do something about it and he went and he did something about it. Compassion is a wonderful word. It's a characteristic of Jesus. He is compassionate. He feels for me. He died for me. He gave his life for me and he'd do it again if it could help me anymore. There's no nicer word than I love the Italian phrase. You're my best friend. Your best friend is a tipo simpatico. He's a type of person that knows exactly how you feel because that person feels your pain. You been there? I hope you have. Huh? I hope you've got a friend like that, because if you haven't, I'll introduce you to Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen.